Today, I'm going to give you the trick to having 10 great ideas before you die. This wolf is a representation of all of us running away from death. <laughs> I'm going to start with a story. So 14 months ago, I sent Leslie a DM. She was our sole copywriter at the time at Red Pepper, and she had just announced her transition into freelance. Myself, I was two and a half years into content strategy, long enough to know that my favorite days were the, were the days that I got to write. Suddenly, a door cracked open in front of me. It was one I'd never seen before. Maybe it was always there, and I had just overlooked it. But the possibility T-boned me from the side, and I threw myself into it. A little beer burp. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Leslie to coffee. This photo is from our coffee date. I took my phone out not because the scene was particularly captivating, but because to me this moment felt like a culminating pivot in my career. I was sure, and I was enlivened, and it felt great. I met Leslie at Steadfast, notebook in hand, ready to learn all the secrets to copywriting. Afterwards, she sent me a list called Aaron's Best Friends. These were all the books I needed to get my feet under me and get a move on. So I started hanging out with some really smart people, like William, Wer William Bernbach, Rosser Reeves, and Luke Sullivan. I know, I know they're black and white, but you learn to take their weathered lessons with a grain of salt when they talk about writing ads directed at housewives. You can't discount their wildly successful foundations, though. They still have a lot to teach. This is the first book in my pile that I read by Natalie Goldberg. She, caught, she taught me to cut through the resistance, not to expect perfection every time I sat down to write, because the expectation of perfection is poison to creativity. I'm now going to run through every book that I've read in the past year. Um, second book, um, Anne Lamont taught me to write the shitty first draft. Get it out there, get it out on paper, crumple that thing up, and keep going. This book taught me the art of impactful pauses and punchy endings, basically, along with a lot of other cool grammatical teachings that are good to reference on my bookshelf. Stephen taught me less self-doubt, more badassing. Thanks, Stephen. <laughs> so the art of writing advertising is a group of interviews with these guys listed on the cover. And over and over again, they said, first, know the product inside and out. Saturate yourself with knowledge of the product. Hey, Whipple Squeeze This is extremely dense. Luke Sullivan taught me a shit ton of things. One lesson in particular is reflective of something Michael Dukes taught me about a year ago. And it's something that's been hanging up in my office on a sticky note ever since. He said, think it out square, then say it with flair. As Luke Sullivan puts it, it's enough to cut through the resistance and get the hell on with it. And finally, Ogilvy on advertising. Again, first study the product. The more you know about it, the more likely you are to come up with a big idea for selling it. The big idea. When I was sitting down with Ogilvy one day, he said this. <laughs> I was sitting down with Ogilvy. And it smacked me upright. Ten great ideas. When we hang our hats on our last day as advertisers, we'll be lucky to have had ten great ideas put out into the world. I made this. <laughs> as advertisers, we tend to think we know what's best for brands. Because we do this day in and day out, we think we have all the answers. After months of practice learning and growing, I thought I'd have most of the answers to copywriting. But I still don't. In a creative field, you rarely ever can. But I've found two things more sturdy than creativity to strengthen and refine. These are things that I can measure, things that I can touch and manipulate and grow, and I think they hold the secret to our 10 great ideas. The first is process. Every maker, creator, and craftsman has one of these, and they rely on this process to get them through the finish line every time. To illustrate the importance of process, let's play a game. The game is write a headline for this Harley Davidson motorcycle. Nate, I'm going to chew. Cold turkey, no prep work. The weather's warming up, travel season's coming, people are getting the itch to travel, the time is changing. We want them to explore on these bad boys because this is our client right now. 
What would you write? Is anyone adventurous enough to throw one out? It's hard to sit down and write a winning headline right off the cuff. In a moment of vulnerability, I'll share a couple of embarrassing ones that I wrote. <laughs> Hit the open road. Big adventure comes on two wheels. Adventure feels like the purr of a Harley Davidson engine. Not so special. But now I want to show you the award-winning headline that one Harley Davidson ad put out. It's a 2002 ad out of Carmichael Lynch. And it's a good one. There's no way I would have written that on my first time sitting down to write, or my 30th, or 100th. This headline paints a picture that's larger than this scene alone. It creates this amazing juxtaposition between this open frontier compared to being cramped on a plane next to strangers and crying babies with no knee room. And in comparison, Harley Davidson is exhilaration on wheels. It's like Don Schneider said when he came to visit us a couple months ago. Paint the desert and then sell the ice cold water, and that's what this headline does. But this copywriter didn't get here on his first try or her first try. There was a process behind it. They probably learned a lot about the product itself, like Harley Davidson's purpose and passion is to fulfill dreams of personal freedom. They learned about the consumer. The average age of a motorcycle owner is 47. 64% of motorcycle owners rarely or never ride with a passenger. Hence the comparison to the crowded plane. California has the most registered motorcyclists in the U.S., followed by South Dakota, hence the wide open Western landscape. And this probably all helped them narrow into the benefit they needed to ultimately sell, which is the independence and freedom. And once they were there, they probably wore themselves out over pages of options. Which brings me to my second secret to having great ideas. I don't think Chris Kinney's here today, but he would be happy if he was because he's been pushing this ever since he walked through those double front doors a year ago. Prolificacy. <laughs> Pro prolificacy. <laughs> I looked up how to say that before I got on, just in case. As Luke Sullivan puts it in Hey Whipple, instead methodically explore different attributes and benefits of your product as you write. Wear yourself out on each one. If you feel like you have some good options, good, keep going. Feeling confident, keep going, and you might come out with a great idea. On page 96, Sullivan shows us how he splinters and expands his thinking across attributes with a bourbon brand he once worked on. It's fascinating to see the work that, goes behind, that comes behind the outcome. So let's go through some of the ones he shows us in the book, starting with um, lines around the age of the bourbon itself. Order a drink that takes nine years to get. Like to hear how it's made? Do you have nine years? Nine long years in a barrel, one glorious hour in a glass. Okay, well how about some ideas around the passing of time to kind of hit up, hint at the bourbon's age. Mother nature made it whiskey, father time made it bourbon. Tree rings multiply, glaciers speed by, and still the bourbon awaits. On May 15th, we'll be rotating barrel number 1,394, one quarter, quarter turn to the left. Just thought you'd like to know. How about some ideas inspired by the history of the brand? First bottled when Wild West meant Kentucky. 110 years old and still in the bars every night. I like that one. The recipe for this bourbon has survived since 1796. Please don't bury it in the mint julep. Finally, how about some ideas around how you enjoy this bourbon? Water ruins baseball games and bourbon. For a quiet night, try it without all the noisy ice. Mixes superbly with a rocking chair and a dog. That was my last one. So 14 months into writing with this whole copywriter label, I'm starting to understand my own process. And it starts 
with a heavy amount of research on the front end, filling my brain with dots, understanding what I'm selling, using it, trying it, followed by knowing my consumer, where they live, what they like, what they dislike, why they get out of bed every day. And that can lead me into how I can narrow down into the allure or what benefit that will ultimately sell the product. And then finally, 90% of it is working your ass off until you have something. And I may come out hours, days, or weeks later with a great idea. Great work comes from honoring the process and working with all the heart we have. If we do, we have a fighting chance of having our 10 great ideas before we die. <laughs>